On today's episode, we're talking about anxiety and how we can best cope with it. Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. The show is about to begin. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of On Finding Peace. I'm Chris, along with my co-host, Missy, and we are here for another great episode of On Finding Peace. And this is the podcast where we talk about practical uh, steps and things that we can do to uh, help increase our inner peace on a daily basis. And uh, today we're talking about anxiety. And it's an important topic, um, one that I talk and write a lot about. Um, So we got a couple different angles. Uh, We'll probably look at it today. But um, one of the things hopefully we can get across is that, at least for me, that the goal is not so much to eliminate anxiety, but it's how best to cope with anxiety. Um, So, Missy, how are... uh, things with you and your world of anxiety or less anxiety or what's happening? Well, I'm obviously uh, everybody's dealing with this uh, COVID-19 and it's been a little, uh, you know, it's a lot of hype about it. And I'm not saying, you know, we should be definitely informed, but uh, we're trying not to go crazy in my household. Uh, We wash our hands. We make sure that uh, if we're sick, we stay home. But, um, other than that, you know, things are going pretty good, smooth, smooth sailing. We're getting closer and closer to our house purchase, uh, which definitely can cause some anxiety as well. How about yourself? Yeah, about the same. You know, it's uh, this uh, virus issue is really um, not really causing me anxiety personally, but I, I think I'm feeling frustration and maybe a bit of anxiety because of uh, you know, what's kind of happening. And uh, for me, it, it seems that the media uh, is kind of fostering some of this in, in their uh, reporting. And, and I always hate to blame the media. I'm, I'm not a media basher, but yeah. um, it, it just seems to me that you know they, they want to say everything is okay, but that's all we hear about. And um, Actually, you know, in, in my area, there's a, a number of grocery stores that are out of things. Um, yeah. A co-worker of mine just uh, went to uh, a store um, and uh, came back from the store and said that they were out of hand sanitizer, hand lotions, and said it wouldn't be until the end of the week. So, um, and that's just one store. I know others, you know, are the same, but that, that's just something that, you know, just happened uh, an hour ago or so. Yeah, we're experiencing the same thing here. I mean, of course, I live in Florida, so we're kind of typical seeing these things around like hurricanes. People are, you know, rushing to get the waters off the shelf and, and, but, you know, bleach, hand sanitizer, toilet paper. And, and, uh, I get it. You know, I, I understand that people don't want to have to be out and in public when people are sick. And as it's getting closer and closer to home, it can cause some, uh, you know, nervousness and some frustration. Um, but, you know, this is still everyday living, um, you know, and we want to be careful and we want to be mindful of things. But when you kind of go overboard, you're really kind of taking from what other people have as, you know, a normal everyday life. And and um, now we have to prepare for not having any toilet paper, not having any bleach, not having any skin sanitizer. And so yeah. like everybody goes into panic. Um and unfortunately, like, I think as a collective society, we all feel that. And, and it's like a pressure to make sure that you are panicked over it rather than a, like, well, okay, let me let my inner wisdom guide me and what's the best habits to, uh, to prepare to, to make sure that my family is taken care of. Exactly. And, you know, one of the frustrating things was with um, one of my neighbors the other day who has, uh, I think it might be a two-year-old, three-year-old, something like that. 
uh, who got sick. I mean, it had nothing to do with nothing, just got sick. So the mother, you know, runs out of the store to get supplies for her sick child, and many of the things she was trying to pick up for her sick child weren't in the store because these are the products that people are scarfing and, and trying to grab yeah. as much as they can, you know, for this virus. And, and she has a legit sick child. And, you know, at least in our area, we don't have any cases of the virus. So you know, her frustration is, you know, I, I get it if we're trying to help people to heal, but we don't have any cases of it here. And I have a sick child here. Yeah. And there's nothing I can do to help my sick kid. Yeah. I mean, and, and this is this is really how it all starts. It all starts with, you know, you take a thought or an idea, whether it's through the media or from other people that you hear, and you start to kind of go down that rabbit hole of worry and wonder, and then you get to anxiety. Trying to predict the future really is what we're trying to do. And I don't know about you, but I'm not getting paid for uh, psychic abilities, you know, so, so I'm not really a good future predictor. So I'm really letting my mind and my thoughts get carried away. And that's what causes anxiety. You know, and, and this is why half, half of the oh, world. Most definitely. I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, I, I'm just agreeing with you, you know, that. that much of anxiety is coming out because we are trying to predict the future and we are trying to, you know, do things in a mood uh, with just stress and anxiety. You know, and one of the things I've been, you know, is that we can plan for the future, but worrying about the future uh, is really not going to get us anywhere. No, and this kind of all travels back to the control. I mean, we, we can be well-informed and we can be prepared, like you said, but we don't have control over what's going to happen. You know, I don't have any control over standing in the line at, at the bank and somebody sneezing on me or, you know, uh, touching the same money that I touched and then I had an itch on my nose. And, you know, um, so you want to you wanna be mindful of things like that, but at the same time, like, you know, if it's going to happen, unfortunately, I hate to say it like that, but I believe that, it's going to happen. And, and, um, you know, they are, you know, pointing out that it's elderly or people with health concerns. So by all means, those people stay at home, have somebody else go do your shopping, you know, try not to be out in public when, when this is around, but the rest of us who are normal everyday individuals should function as such, I believe. No, and I totally agree, you know, not to minimize, and then I really don't mean to minimize anyone suffering with this or for those of this, but, um, you know, there are other conditions out there that cause more death, and even wide, you know, that this isn't one of the largest uh, epidemics that we've ever encountered. Right. So are suffering with it, you know, I, I do feel for you and, you know, you're in my thoughts and prayers and I'd support you however I can. But you're right, the vast majority of people, uh, you know, who are healthy and on the younger side are going to be fine. You know, it, it's really not, you know, I, I think when we don't do our normal everyday activity, we're just increasing you know, our, our stress and anxiety because we're not doing our normal. Well, look at what they're doing. I mean, and don't get me wrong. Again, I understand that people want to be, you know, cautious. I understand that. But the stock market has dropped. Um, uh, events are being canceled worldwide. Flights. I mean, we are stopping functioning as a society and as a world, which is only going to cause us to hit a depression. It's going to cause everything to you know, fall apart in our economic society, not only mentally with our anxiety that we're dealing with. Oh, definitely. And, you know, I was talking to uh, somebody earlier today about that, that, you know, if, if you want a recipe for panicking people, the first thing you want to do is start shutting everything down. Yeah, you know, yeah. so when people are giving that word, you know, hey, just, you know, it's not that bad or, you know, you whatever, wash your hands and all that, and then they start shutting everything down, that's when people start saying, why aren't they telling us, you know, what's really going on? Right. 
Right. And that creates the anxiety. You know, you don't have to be a conspiracy theorist to start thinking those thoughts, yeah. which is not going to help your inner peace at all. No. <laughs> you know, and, and I'm a firm believer in the law of attraction, what you think about, you bring about. So the more that we worry and we focus on these things, the more we are becoming an exact match for it. You know, and maybe a lot of people don't think that, but but I... I just happen to be one of those people that when you focus on what you want, you get what you want. When you focus on what you don't want, you get what you don't want. You know, it's the, the, the universe, God, whatever you want to call it, does not hear no. It just hears the want. And so it doesn't hear I don't want. It just hears want. And um, Exactly. Yeah. I mean, and, you know, I, I have two young boys and, and I want to educate them and want to make sure that that they're well protected. So of course, you know, we, we're washing our hands, we're carrying hand sanitizer, we're not touching our face. But I have a 10 year old who wants to touch everything. He wants to <laughs> hug everyone. And I don't want to stomp that out of him, to be honest with you, because it's beautiful. He is just a wonderful soul. And at the same time, when you hear things like this, if you're not appropriating the way that you're doing things and, and you're not being mindful of, okay, before I itch my nose or eat my food, maybe I should wash my hands. This is a normal everyday thing though for us. You know, we always should wash our hands after we use the restroom, after right before we're getting ready to eat. And so I don't understand how it, it's that much different. You know, these germs are I, out there. Exactly, and you know, one of the comments that I heard a couple of days ago was, you know, what I have people just decided that it's good for us to wash our hands. <laughs> no. You know, like having always been doing this. Yeah. Um, Makes so, you wonder about the places we've been eating out at, right? <laughs> exactly. You know, now we're selling out on hand sanitizer, but we weren't before. Yeah. So that that's a little scary. Um, <laughs> yeah. I. I saw a meme that had, it was a little baggie of uh, hand sanitizer and it said, you know, hey man, this stuff, this is what really is selling right now. So, you know, it was just like, it's, it's ludicrous, you know, because we can't get an, a daily need, like, I mean, toilet paper, bleach, things that you would think are, you know, easy to come by. And, and so now we're, we're panicking and those are the things we're out of, but you know, I guess, like I said, I, I kind of feel like those are one of those things. Yes, be prepared. Yes, be informed. But at the same time, you know, just don't go crazy. You know, don't hoard things because that's that's not going to get us anywhere. No, and, and that's the main advice that I've been trying to tell, uh, you know, my clients and just other people that when you look at this, you know, one, yes, stay informed, you know, because... If you are in a certain age bracket, if you are, um, you know, compromised medically, this might be an issue for you, you know, and, and I don't want to minimize it. If it is a threat for you, then by all means, you got to do what you got to do. Um, but at the same time, you know, it is all about the control and, and not control. And, you know, when we hear of all the people, you know, who initially were dying in China and, and, you know, they got the brunt of it. I mean, that's where it started. It was the strongest. It was concentrated in, in that area. So that creates part of the panic as well. And then everybody thinks, well, I can't control this. So then that increases my anxiety. And yeah, what I've been trying to help people understand is let's not focus so much on what I can't control. And like what you're saying, if it costs or sneezes on me, I can't stop them from doing that. And unless I actually get, you know, the virus, I'm not quarantining myself. So I'm going to go out in society and do what I need to do. So, yeah, that may happen. But now i got to think to myself, but what can I control? And there are some things in this that I can control. And partly is my attitude. Um, and also with some of the actions. You know, so, yeah, if I'm in public, am I going to be a little more observant of people around me? You know, so do I want people as close as normally I wouldn't care? Right. You know, and as you say, let's wash our hands. I mean, even though we should always be doing that, but maybe do it a little more. Well, uh, when you so there's that, things that, yeah, I can do. Yeah. 
you say that as well. I mean, like, let's give each other space. Like, I mean, I, there's a bubble. There's a there's a, a factor of closeness, unless you are my child or a family member or somebody that I absolutely want to be that close to me. Then, you know, like, give me some elbow room. And, and uh, that way, if you do cough, you know, of course they say, you know, elbow bump, fist bump, you know, whatever it is, you know, it just wave. I mean, you don't even have to touch each other if that's, you know, like if it bothers your level of anxiety, you know, you don't have to do that, but also have some courtesy for, for that space. Like if you know that you're sick and you still have to go in public, you know, God forbid, but it happens all the time. We know it, you know, people go out all the time sick, you know, you wear the mask, you wear the gloves, you, you make sure that you're protecting other people as well, not just yourself, you know, mm -hmm. it would be helpful for us as, as a society to be that considerate to not just think of ourselves. That's my take. Yeah, me. most definitely. And yeah, no, I, I'm in total agreement as, as usually we are anyways, we, we kind of agree on <laughs> these approaches. Um, okay. So what I would suggest that people um, do is really just try to stay present and feel what you should do rather than listening. It's really hard to not um, focus on what other people want or feel the pressure of, you know, them pushing in, you into uh, a panic, you know, so take your time and, and stay present with yourself to know what you need to do the best to guide yourself. And, and you'll, you'll be safer if you listen to your inner guidance and stay more present. Yeah, that, that sounds uh, very wise, um, you know, definitely listening to ourselves because, you know, we, we tend to know if, if we spend the time listening, and to me that's where, you know, a lot of the mindfulness comes in, if we can really spend that time uh, doing that, then we are going to learn so much more about ourselves than, uh, you know, we probably ever have. So I think there's some, you know, really good advice to uh, help people calm. And um, really what I, I've been talking to people and even how I'm trying to live my life right now is, you know, keeping a, a proper perspective on this and looking at what I can control and make sure that I can control that. Um, but then where possible, try to help other people, you know, because it, it's not just about ourselves. It, it's also about those around us. So what can I do that might help to bring some peace to somebody else or alleviate their anxieties or, you know, if, if they really needed a hand sanitizer, can't get it, can I give them some of mine? You know, it's really simple acts like that, but that gets us outside of ourselves and, and just helps us to know we're, we are a part of a, a larger community. Yeah, and you know, one more thing I would say is change the subject. You know, like it's okay mm. to be informed, to hear what somebody else has to say, but there's no harm in changing the subject, you know, and um, talking about something different that is a little lighter, a lot, you know, a lot less that you have control over that our, this disease is what we have no control over. So if we can change the subject to something a little bit more lighter and, you know, focus on that, having a good time, enjoying the moment, then then that helps a lot of people just to kind of get out of that headspace of worry and anxiety. Yeah, totally agree. That That's an awesome point that the more we talk about it, the more we're going to focus on it. And, you know, that that's just going to create that anxiety. And I do realize that we didn't have a challenge uh, this time. Um, I know. And the virus to be a reason that we so not so much as a challenge but maybe what we can encourage the listeners to do is to write in and comment and um, you know wherever they can in social media wherever you find us but talk about what are they doing uh, you know as far as techniques to help reduce their anxiety and stress uh, while we're going through, you know, what we're uh, currently going through with, you know, all the, the news and everything else um, with the virus. So, How I don't know, it's not so a challenge, but it, it's just, you know, maybe this will be the let others help others by sharing what's working for them and what are they doing that, that's positive and working. Absolutely. How are you keeping your peace? 
I mean, during yeah. the challenge, it's so, really a challenge for all of us as, as a collective. So how are you keeping your peace? That's great. Yeah. So a little bit different than our other challenges, but still, I, I was just about to close up and I was like, oh, we can't not do a challenge. And, um, <laughs> That's how it goes. People say, see, the virus even affected you guys and you changed your format and I, I don't want. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> exactly. Awesome. Well, I really appreciate it. And um, if there's anything that I can do, we can do to help you, you know, find your piece. Of course, reach out. We'd love to hear from them. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, both of our website services um, are available to all of you. I'm putting those in the show notes and just, you know, let us know what we can do to uh, help guide you through this. And if you are making your way through perfectly fine, awesome. let us know how you're doing and please help others do the same. Absolutely. So, Thank you, Missy, and I uh, hope everybody has uh, a mindful day. Thanks, Chris. Thanks for listening.